Hi, in this video I'll be painting with some super granulating watercolors by Schmincke. Three sets were released around the same time with the themes of Volcano, Shire, and Desert. I've already done a video specifically about the five volcano colors, but I'll briefly show those off again because two of the colors in that set, Volcano Red and Volcano Yellow, are vital for replicating the convenience mixtures found in all three of these sets. Those are the only two colors in this series that I fully recommend for their uniqueness and usefulness as a single pigment mixing color. Otherwise, as of early 2022, the entire line of super granulation theme colors offers a lot of similar mixtures, all of which can be mixed using a much smaller selection of core ingredients. While many are beautiful, depending on your art style, you may struggle to find a use for each and every one frequently enough to justify collecting them all. Before I do some artwork with these, I'll take a few minutes to talk about DIY replica mixtures because I want to make sure that anyone on a budget understands how to go about recreating these effects. Schmincke does offer these colors in half pans or tubes, but depending on your location, this could run you $10 to $20 per color and be less versatile than owning the single pigment components. Some of the ingredients are common colors you might already have in your palette or can find in cheaper brands, such as Lucas and Tubes, or from Roman Schmall and White Knights who offer full-size pans for about $5, often half the price of Schmincke's smaller half pans. I recommend checking the ingredient numbers on the swatch cards to see if you already own some of these. If you want to take your time to browse all of the still images of every single Schmincke watercolor, I posted pictures of the swatch cards for their entire catalog of about 185 colors, alongside written reviews and lightfast testing at kimcrick.com. The older super granulation theme sets released over the past couple years had all been much easier to replicate using the single pigment ingredients available in Schmincke's permanent catalog for years, most of which could be swapped out with other brands that also offered these pigments. However, the new Volcano Red PR108 and Yellow PY159 are unique extra granulating versions of those particular pigments, which will be harder to replicate using options from other brands. That's not to say you can't make some very close and certainly interesting DIY mixtures using any brand of Cadmium Red PR108. They just won't be as textural as the mixtures you could achieve specifically using Schmincke's Volcano Red version. PY159 is a rare pigment primarily available from just a few brands. Schmincke Volcano Yellow, Kremer as Intensive Yellow, or Windsor & Newton as Lemon Yellow Deep. All of them have very weak tinting strength. You'll end up using more than you'd expect in mixtures to even tell that the color is there. PY159 always has a tendency to granulate, but Schmincke's version is definitely the most textural. I found it to be quite gummy, possibly having more binder or additives to promote texture or extra glycerin to help it re-wet easier, which did not work out so well. I found that many of these mixtures were weaker than usual. Now this is partly a pigment trait. Some colors are just not as strong as others, as you've probably noticed when working with something overpowering like phthalo blue. Unfortunately, the paleness of some of the desert and shire colors made them feel similar to student grade paints with a low pigment load. I ended up putting huge dents into my half pans after doing two tiny 5x7 inch paintings. Some of these paints really seem to require an unusual amount of paint to achieve a rich color. I will still recommend PY159 as a unique granulating yellow, which there are very few options for, especially a light fast one, but be aware that this is a generally weak color and is mixed into a whopping 11 of the 15 colors in these three sets. This resulted in most of them drying with a glossy shine in mass tone. This distracting binder buildup does not happen with most of the other watercolors I own. It gives each of these mixtures the feeling of being generally weaker, harder to re-wet, and more pale than most other colors they carry. I ended up really enjoying the color called Shire Green, a mixture of Viridian PG-18 and Volcano Yellow PY-159. 
I think it will be a really pretty sunlit green for botanicals, but I personally would not buy it again because the pan required a lot of scrubbing and I normally have Viridian by M. Graham or Roman Schmal already in my palette, which could just be quickly mixed with Volcano Yellow to recreate this color on demand. If you happen to already own another brand of PY159, like Windsor & Newton's, the mixture will be similar, just slightly less eager to color separate. While many of the single pigments required to replicate these mixtures yourself are common, there are some other rare pigments like PBR33 or PV62 that you may have a hard time finding in other brands. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't other ways to replicate these mixtures using similar looking pigments you might already own. Don't be afraid to experiment. For instance, Schmincke's Uncommon PV62 Cobalt Violet Hue is nearly identical to the much more commonly available PV15 Ultramarine Violet. I found Windsor & Newton's to be a good replacement, and the resulting mixtures were pretty close when using either granulating purple. Though ultramarine violet may have a slightly lighter weight or smaller pigment particles, making the color flow further in wet washes. So you may see a more pronounced color separation or two-tone effects in mixtures using PV15 instead of PV62. The difference was less noticeable when working on dry paper. Aside from Volcano Red and Yellow, there were a few other colors that I would consider buying again since I found them to be particularly useful. I can definitely understand wanting to collect colors that you think you'll use often in your art style. The convenience of a pre-made mixture definitely becomes more worthwhile if it frequently saves you time and achieves exactly the predictable effect you're after. My top three favorite mixtures in this release included Shire Blue, Desert Brown, and Desert Green. I found Shire Blue a mix of PY159, Ultramarine Blue PB29, and Cobalt Green Deep PG26 to be a stunning combination for water. It ended up being a lovely pairing with Desert Brown, a color so perfect for beach sand or dry landscapes, made with Volcano Red, Yellow, and Mars Black PBK11. I'm a big fan of dark value textural greens like Cobalt Green Deep PG26 for adding texture to foliage, so I was really drawn to the spotted red texture added by the introduction of Volcano Red in the Desert Green mixture. I enjoyed using Shire Grey for the duck's beak, and I'm a big fan of the texture combination of Cobalt Blue Deep PB74 with Black Iron Oxide, sometimes called Lunar or Mars Black PBK11. I found the cool shadowy color of Shire Grey quite useful, but I could barely see any hints of PY159 in this mixture, but I found that sometimes it was easy to lose a little of that yellow on my palette as it kept sinking and stuck to my mixing tray while painting. If you don't own a cobalt blue, but you do have a good granulating ultramarine, usually called French ultramarine or ultra deep, that would definitely be more economical as a cheaper and very similar DIY mixing ingredient. I did overall enjoy the lovely texture of these colors and especially appreciate these paints as inspiring recipe combinations which I may not have ever decided to mix without being prompted. I think that these will provide some beautiful granulating options, particularly well suited for landscape or abstract artists. I'd love to hear which colors you like the best, and if you're planning to use these as a reference for DIY mixture inspiration. Will you be playing around with the single pigments you already own, or have you decided to invest in any of these Schmincke mixtures? Let me know in the comments.
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.